Natasha Berkshire here for Berkshire Ballet. We are doing a little makeup demonstration today with Emily um, for Nutcracker makeup. So we're going to start with the most basic, um, simple rolls as far as makeup goes. Um, this is going to be the first ones we're going to do are going to be good for party girls in Act One, angels. Um, the marzipan shepherds, shepherdesses, um, what else am I thinking of? Jesters, um, anything that has just basic makeup and no extra anything. So we're going to start with, um, this is just basic foundation. Um, the one I'm using is Max Factor, the pan stick, P-A-N-S-T-I-K. Um, the, the shade that I'm using on Emily is called True Beige, um, but please use whatever is appropriate for your skin tone. Um, and normally, you can use either your finger or a little sponge. And you need to get the coverage enough so that you're essentially creating a complete mask on the face. You don't really want any skin showing. It goes all over the whole face, including up the ears and down the neck, so that even though you're creating a mask, you don't want to look like you're wearing a mask. Up into the hairline chin up a little bit. And this makeup is easy to find. You can get it at pretty much anywhere, grocery stores, Walgreens, CVS. Um, it's not that expensive. It lasts a long time and it has very, very good coverage for stage lights. And when you're thinking about, Jeanette, when you're thinking about makeup for stage, it is not the same as makeup for street. It's not the same as makeup for, you know, a special occasion. It's not even the same for photography. Um, because the whole point of makeup for the stage is so that your features stand out underneath very, very harsh, bright lights. And so it's a little bit different from what you would normally do. Even on the lips, you gotta blank everything out. Basically, you're creating the blank slate on which to put everything else. Then, very, very, very important, very important, powder. And not the compact. You need loose powder and not with a brush. You need it with a, 
one of these um, little things. This is, and you can get all this. Stuff. This is CoverGirl. Um, what is this one called? Hang on a second. Let me look. This is called Professional Loose Powder. This one is Translucent Fair, but I also have another one here that's called um, Translucent Medium. And again, please use the tone that best suits your skin tone. Um, we want to absolutely have no shine, and you're going to feel like you're putting on a heck of a lot of powder, but it's necessary. It's not only does it set what's called setting the foundation so that it doesn't move around on the skin, but it also helps to absorb any oil that happens to come up through your skin and keep the shine from your face. We do not want shine on the skin because shine reflects the light and so then the makeup does not show as well. And then your features don't show as well. The next thing we're going to do is to do some basic contouring. Contouring is basically the creation of light and shadow on the skin so that bone structure stands out better. So I'm using, this is American Beauty. Um, it's called Double Cream. But you can use pretty much any brand of, this is, I don't know if you can see, a light colored cream or white shimmery type um, eyeshadow. It should have a little bit of a shimmer to it. It shouldn't be matte. And what we're gonna do is, close your eyes. We're gonna basically do the entire eyelid All the way up underneath her um, eyebrow. So the entire top part is all white. It's best to put the light on first because it's difficult to cover shadow with light. It's easier to cover light with shadow. So it's easier to put dark over light colors. So we start with the lightest ones. Kind of pull out the corners just a little bit because of course you want to make the eyes look bigger on stage so that they can project the expressions. Okay, also now this is very subtle. It's not a lot. But we're going to go down the center of the nose just a little bit and blend it in. Very, very important to make sure that all makeup is blended. There are no major sharp edges. And for little girls, just a little one up on the cheek. So those cheekbones stand out. Get your chin up a little bit. And just along the jawline, just a little bit. Make sure it's nicely blended. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that little bit of shimmer will pick up the light and help those features to stand out just a little bit more. Okay, now what? Now we do the shadow part. So, oops. this I'm using, I don't even know what this is from. This is um, from one of those little collection, you know, little palettes of shadow. Um, you can use any sort of, you could even probably use this color also, which is the, the opposite to that lighter one that I was talking about, like a, a lightish brown, not real, real dark. In fact, I guess I'll just use this one that um, I have out here because we're going to do just a little bit. To, hold your head straight, sweetheart. Just a little bit to shade from where the innermost part of the eyebrow is. Just a tiny little bit. Bring it down. Just a tiny little bit. And you'll see, even already, that her nose now is starting to pop out a little bit more. You 
can really start to see her bone structure starting to be more prominent. Okay, just a little bit, make sure we blend it. Especially with little people, you don't want it to be too dramatic. Um, otherwise, it makes them look like they have an old face on a young body. We don't want that either. Okay, then I take a, like a regular blush type brush. And we're going to go just underneath where the jawline is, just a little tiny bit under the jawline. You know what? I'm going to use contour brush. With the same brown. Yeah. And we're going underneath the jawline. So you're going underneath the white part that you put on before. So we're going underneath the white that we put on before. Can you turn your head this way? And again, it's not a lot. It doesn't need to be a lot. Stage makeup is not about having really bright colors necessarily, but it is about a layering of makeup so that it looks natural. You don't want it to look like, you know, you're you have a lot of makeup on. You just want it to look like you can see your face clearly from the stage. So put a little bit at the temple and a little bit and then in the natural bone structure of where the forehead comes in, there is a little bit of indentation where the, where the skull is right there. So we just accent that a little bit with the contouring. So we've done the nose, we've done the jawline, we've done, done the cheekbones, we've done the temples, and we've done a little bit on the forehead. And again, powder. just to make sure that it's not too drastic. And to absorb any additional oils that may have started to surface. Okay, so now that's the basic palette. I'm going to add a little bit of some brighter white just underneath her eyebrows, just to make those come out a little bit more. Can you turn that way? The next thing I'm going to do is to apply the eyelashes because when we are creating um, the length of the eyebrows and the shading around the specific eye, you're basically changing the um, aspect ratio of how big the eye is in relationship to the face. And what helps to determine that is how long the eyelashes are and um, how wide they are on the face. If I can get these off of here, <laughs> that would be great. Okay. For little, little people, you can trim the eyelashes a little bit because very often they are, you know, they're not made for little people. They're made for adults, and so they're too wide around the eyes. And if it's getting too far into the inside corner, you can trim it back a little bit so that it's not so uncomfortable for them. Do we want eyelashes on boys as well? No, only girls, only girls. And what thickness do we need? Um, for the little ones, these ones are um, Revlon number 503. These are fine, these are not very thick, if you can see. Okay, <clears throat> okay close your eyes. And normally these have a little bit of an of an adhesive edge to them. Um, some of them don't come with that and so you have to get the little tube and put a little a little bead just along the edge. What helps is if you put the if you put the um, bead on the edge and then let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute 
because when it first comes out, it's very slippery and they will slide around on the eye. If you let it sit without putting it on your eye yet, the glue itself gets a little bit tacky. So when you put it on, it'll stay in place and then it will dry and, and fully adhere to the, to the eye. When you're using the eyelash glue, you have to tell whoever you're working on that they have to stay with their eyes closed for a minute because if they're moving around and um, they don't let it sit for a second so that the glue can set, it will come off. And I need to be able to get this other eyelash off of here. Just a little bit long for Emily, but I think we'll, we'll be all right. Um, if they are a little bit too long, it's fine to just use a little pair of nail scissors and just cut them off. Um, because if they are too long, they tend to poke on the in, especially the inner part of the, where the tear duct is on the inner part of the eye. And it can really irritate the kid's eyes. So you definitely don't want it to be something that's going to be painful, irritating, or distraction because they have enough that they need to be thinking about anyway um, when they're getting ready for performance. So you don't want their eyelashes to be a problem. Okay, open. Blink, blink, blink. <laughs> yeah, come up a little bit. And try to, try as best as you can, try to look up at the ceiling for a second. Try as best as you can to line up the edge of the eyelash with the edge is the wonderful liquid eyeliner. <laughs> um, this definitely takes practice. Um, if you've never done it before, it might um, be a good idea to have somebody help you the first time. Um, if you have never done it before, I suggest practicing a few times before the big day. Um, the one that I'm using is called Maybelline New York Eye Studio. And it's actually not just um, a liquid eyeliner, it's actually like a cake. If you can see, it's kind of used a little bit, but it's a cake. Um, they do make, um, I'm not sure who, who the brand is, but it's like a, it looks like a felt tip pen almost. And that's actually quite an easy one to use um, because it's, you know, it's easy to handle more like a pen rather than a brush. So, we're going to start Oops, this is coming off a little bit. Okay. Start at the inside. And basically, you're just going to follow straight across The key to doing the bottom eyeliner is using a very thin line. You don't need a big thick line. And it doesn't really even need to go out very far. Basically you're trying to redraw the outline of your natural eye. So that instead of it being small that it's wider. So now I need you to look up at the ceiling please. Start at the inside edge. You're basically going to go straight across. Just out just a little tiny bit. So 
But if you see, look up at the ceiling for a minute, but keep your chin down so we can see. You're not right on the edge of the eye. You're probably about a sixteenth of an inch underneath where the actual edge of the eye is. So there's space there, so you're creating a wider eyebrows. For their Even eye. on fair-haired students, they need to be dark. Otherwise, the light will wash them out. And if you look at someone who has no eyebrows, their expression is very difficult to read. I'm going to use a fairly dark shade of brown. For dark hair or black, I normally use that. This is a little bit lighter because she is fair, but it is, as you can see, it's pretty dark. And I use a wedged eyebrow brush. And again, you're going to basically line up the inside corner of the eye, and that is where the inside most part of the eyebrow begins. It's basically where you started that little bit of shading. You're going to continue that now, but much darker onto the eyebrow. Is that eye shadow, or is that yes. actually eyebrow? Liner? This is eye shadow. Okay. Yeah. And you don't want the eye sh uh, brows to be too rounded. They should have a curve, but the curve ends up being just as for stage makeup. Look straight front, Emily. Normally the curve happens just on the outside of where the iris is. For stage makeup, it happens even further out because of course the goal is to try to make the eyebrows look even bigger than they are in real life. So this gets pulled all the way out and then only just at the end does it swing down just a little bit on the outside edge. Now, the reason that I use eyeshadow on the younger ones is because it's not quite so severe on their little faces. It's a little bit softer. Um, on the older dancers, as you'll see later when I do my own, I use pencil because you need a very, very, very strong line for the eye, I'm sorry, <laughs> for the eye uh, brows. Pull it out just a bit, a little bit past where their natural brow ends. Just a little bit past. And then kind of go ahead and get rid of all that. Oh, my hair's straight in the way. Can I look straight? So we can see. You gotta look into the light a little bit. Turn this way. There we go. Okay. So that's the eyebrows. Next is going to be shadowing the eyes themselves. I'm going to just close this up so it doesn't dry out. And this you can use, you could even probably use similar color to what you use for the eyebrow, but I would suggest maybe going a little bit lighter. But it should be in the brown family. Um, I have this one is uh, Maybelline um, New York Eye Studio again. This is called Caffeine Rush. It's got a really nice mix of the lights and the darks to use for contouring and shading. And I'm actually going to use not the, even the darkest one. I'm going to use this medium one right here on the right side. You close your eyes. Start at the outer edge. You're going to see she, she naturally has um, a shadow where her brow ridge is, which is basically the edge of where the eye socket of the skull is and that's what you want to follow sort of on the outer edge just a little bit just a little bit not too far in and you want to pull out the edge of the lash just a little bit following the natural bone structure, but just accentuating it just a little bit to make it a little bit more 
dramatic so that it can stand up against the lights of the stage. And again, you want to make sure that you blend everything so that there are no sharp edges on the makeup, especially on the younger dancers. Okay, now for little ones, I would also suggest adding a little bit of something pinky. Pinky, I don't mean pinky finger, I mean of a reddish tone, because that will warm it up. This one is sort of a rose kind of color. And just add that to the edge there, and we'll just soften it up for our little ones a little bit so it's not so severe. And unless you're doing um, a specific character type makeup, like later on we'll talk about Chinese and Arabian, you don't want to use anything that's too purpley or too blue. Okay, so blush is next. I have, this one is what I used to use. This is Color Girl, Cover Girl Classic Color Blush. It's called Iced Plum, uh, number 510. It comes like this. And it's a nice rose color. Now again, we don't want to overpower their little faces with a whole bunch of red. This is just to make them look like they have a healthy glow. And you also want, it should not just only be on the cheek. It should also go up on their foreheads a little bit, on the apples of the cheeks, and going slightly up, sort of in a triangular motion. up a little bit and on the base of the jaw. Okay, so we're getting close. The last thing is the lips and for that Um, actually, for the younger ones, what is this? Could not be too light. Um, I used to use L'Oreal, um, it's called Plum Brulee, number 213. To be honest, I don't know if they still make it, um, but it's a fairly deep, sort of rose-ish color. Um, but you don't just put it on with the stick. You use a brush, and especially for the younger ones, so that you can put it on not very thick, because they don't need bright, bright red lips. They're just little people. So um, we, we want to have age-appropriate makeup. <laughs> um, but we do want them, you know, their, their lips to stand out so that we again see the expressiveness of their faces. When you're starting to do the makeup, it is very important that you start with a clean face that has been moisturized. Don't start with a face that you have not had moisturizer on. You should probably put it on, you know, a couple minutes before you're about to start your makeup because the moisture the moisturizer allows the first of all it's you know it's great for the skin um, it helps to protect the skin as you're putting all of this onto it but it also allows the makeup to move around smoothly on the skin and be distributed evenly on the skin otherwise sometimes if you have a little dry patch of skin 
the makeup can sort of congeal there and stick and it ends up being more dense than the other parts and it looks like you've got a shadow on your face when you really don't. And so um, it's very important that you uh, prepare your face properly for putting the makeup on. And always, always, always at the end of the performance, you need to make sure that you take all of it off and preferably before you leave the theater. Um, one thing that we always were taught was you're creating an experience for the audience, a magical experience for the audience. And part of that is the fantasy that you are creating for them should not be then brought out into the real world. And so in order to leave that fantasy and that whole experience, Behind, the dancers should not be seen in public with their stage makeup on. So make sure that when you come to the theater that you bring appropriate product to remove the makeup. It could be baby wipes work really, really well and they're fast. Um, or, you know, Pond's cold cream works great. Um, soap and water is always good too. <laughs> All right. So we make sure that we follow the contour of the lips. If you don't have very curvy lips, this is where you can create them. Obviously, we don't want to be disproportionate to the rest of the face. So it needs to be um, not um, too much extra, just a little tiny bit. Can you look right in the camera? Um, the last thing is a little bit of mascara just to tie in the natural lashes to the fake ones. And so, ooh, you okay? Yeah. Sorry, did I get your eyeball? <laughs> Make them stand out a little bit more. Can you blink? I'll hold it, you blink it. Okay, and what I would like Emily to do right now is to just stand up and walk all the way over there and turn around. And if you can see, even just at this distance, it doesn't look like she's wearing a whole lot of makeup, but you can really see her eyes are popped, you can see her face, you can really see smile and look sad. You can see the expression on her face change. Um, not so much because she's wearing a heck of a lot of makeup, but because how it's being applied um, helps to bring out the features in her face. Okay, so for baby mice, that's what we're going to show now. You use the basic makeup because um, we're going to add just a little bit of character to them to make them the mice. Um, but most of the mice are also angels, so if we have the basic makeup underneath, it won't be difficult to change them. Um, also, whatever um, the kids are in Act 1, they should have their makeup on for whatever they're doing in Act 1 when they come to the theater. Um, especially for um, students who are age 12 or 13 and under. They need to have some parental supervision doing their makeup at home before they get to the theater. If they have a secondary role that's in Act 2 that they need to change for, we will have the appropriate people backstage to help them make those changes, including their makeup and hair changes if there are any. All right, so mice, we need little noses. So we're going to put a little triangle over the front of the nose, over the tip. Are you using eyeliner? This is eyeliner. This is black eyeliner. I'm using Maybelline New York Unstoppable Eyeliner in Onyx. Um, you could probably also use the black um, liquid liner, which would work very well also. And we're going to fill this in here with my little massy nose. <laughs> Too bad you're not getting ready for Halloween right now. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to go down the front a little bit also. 
down to the lips. And then we're going to go with the black. We're going to mirror the top of the lips. It looks like you have a mustache right now. I promise it won't look like that when we're done. <laughs> On both sides. And it's going to curve up. going to make little whiskers. So just a couple. On each side, or maybe three on each side. And they don't have to be exactly even. my little mouse. There we go, that's looking better. There's my little mouse. It's a mouse. <laughs> so, we're back. And this time we're going to be doing the soldier makeup. So this is the battle scene, the toy soldiers. It's the basic makeup, so we can still see eyes, face structure. But we're going to add a little bit to make them look like dolls. So we're gonna take the, you know what, I'm gonna use the eyeliner, not this one, I'm gonna use the liquid. I'm gonna give them a little bit of some bigger eyelashes on the bottom, just three. One on the inside. One in the middle. One on the outside. to blink look up at the ceiling for me. There you go. So that's the eyes. And then we need Nice round button cheeks. <clears throat> Same lipstick. And a small circle just on the apple of the cheek. In past, we've done it by cutting out pieces of felt and sticking it onto cheeks, but unfortunately, most of the time they stay, but very often they don't. And so we have decided to go with the permanent solution where there's no chance that the cheeks can fall off on stage.
This is the same for all soldiers. All soldiers. Boy or and girl. lieutenants, correct. So the lieutenants will not have the fake eyelashes, but most of the rest of it is actually the same makeup for them, especially for the for the soldiers um, part. They do need to have the little bit redder lips than they would be using for party boys so that they stay a little bit more uniform. And it's the same color as what we're using for the cheeks, so um, we're trying to be economical as well. And there we have our toy soldiers. Look into it. There we go. All right, so the base makeup is the same. We're now looking at the little girls in Chinese. Um, we do need to accentuate the eyeliner a little bit to make it look a little bit more Asian. So we're going to take the eyeliner and closure. Actually, look up at the ceiling. It's good. We're going to take the top line and we're going to pull it down and in. And then we're going to take the bottom line and pull it up and out. into that. There we go. Then we're going to use actually, guess what, the same red lipstick. We are going to get our money's worth out of this thing. We're going to, and also the, the same lip uh, brush, so definitely make sure that you have a decent um, lip brush. Okay, close. We're going to go along the top with the red from all the way across. And you're basically going to paint the lipstick as if it was eyeshadow all the way across. a little bit out even further than the black. So parents, if you're watching this, my suggestion is that you guys practice with your kids before dress rehearsal. And I say before dress rehearsal because dress rehearsal in the theater is essentially going to be just as if we were in performance. So parents, unless you're working backstage as a volunteer, and you have a specific job that you're doing back there, you will not be allowed in the backstage area. And so if the kids need to do a change, you might want to have a little practice. Um, like I said, we will have volunteers backstage to help, but um, it might be good for them to practice. Okay, a second, close your eyes just a minute. Look into the camera. Okay. There we go. And
and the same, you know, the same normal lips, and you can't really see right now because the, the base makeup is just muted because we've been doing different makeup changes, but there should still be the blush and the contouring and all that from the previous. I've got things holding a paper up because <laughs> we've still got her with the Chinese eyes, but I wanted to show everybody what we're going to do for the lambs for marzipan. It's going to be the same base makeup that we did to start with, but we're going to add just a little bit of character. Um, we're going to use a little pink. Um, what I'm using here, oh goodness, I don't even know if I can read this. Um, it's number 593 CoverGirl. <laughs> I don't even know what this is called. It's one of those um, matte, flat, um, lip gloss. Lip, it's like a lipstick that you have to put like one of those things that you set. Um, but it doesn't have to be um, necessarily this one. It could also just be, you know what? I'm going to use this one instead. A light pink lipstick. Um, on the nose. And I have to use this because my lip liner is being used for the red one. So we're doing the tip of the nose in the pink lipstick with a little bit of an outline. Should I have this up just a little bit? Just a little outline around the nose, just the tip of the nose. Where did I put that lipstick? <laughs> there it is. I found it. And just a little four. Yes. On each side, just for the lammies. That's all we'll do for them. Stage Makeup 101. <laughs> First thing is, like I said before, make sure that your skin has some moisturizer on it because then the um, foundation will spread more easily. Um, I prefer Nivea. It's just what I've always used, but you can use whatever you like. But make sure that your skin is clean and moisturized before you get started. Um, I use... I used to use a cake makeup. They, I don't even know if they make those anymore. But this is Pan Stick. Um, it is Max Factor. The one that I'm using is True Beige. Um, but please use whatever um, you know color you need to match your own skin tone. Oops. And basically cover absolutely everything up so that we start with a clean slate, a blank slate. Trying to cover up any unevenness of skin tone, any blemishes. Make sure that you get well into the hairline and even up onto the ears. Otherwise, your ears will look like they're on a different body. <laughs> And even down the neck also needs to be done. All the way up on the ears. And down the neck. I have to tell you, it's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> I retired from the stage over 10 years ago. So. Do you miss it? I do. 
I do. I don't miss um, the soreness. I don't miss the injuries. I don't miss the drama. I definitely miss the dancing. I miss being on stage. Mm. That's for sure. And then, of course, powder the heck out of your face. You have to, like, pound it into your skin so that it gets into your pores, actually, so that it absorbs the oil. You don't want to be shiny on stage. You want as much of your skin to be as matte as possible, especially when you're starting out in your makeup. You'll go through a lot of powder. I used to leave about an hour for makeup um, when I was dancing just because I never wanted to rush and I always wanted to take my time so I could do a good job and depending on the role that I was doing sometimes it would entail um, a lot more like for instance if I was doing um, you know Dracula's Bride or um, something that required um, much more extreme makeup, I would have to leave at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, just for makeup, just um, in order to get that all on there. Okay, and just like in the other uh, video for the base makeup, we're applying the light contouring first. To get the whole lid and under the eye um, under the eyebrow. And you don't necessarily have to buy expensive makeup. I never really did. I always got my makeup at the grocery store or the pharmacy, and it was quite effective. You can find some excellent products. Uh, MAC is a very good product of makeup, especially for stage makeup, for very, very vibrant, long-lasting colors. Um, but it's not you know, required, I don't think. Um, I would say fine with just, you know, regular brands. Um, okay, and we need a little bit of light contouring now. So I'm going to use this one. So I'm using that same light that I used on Emily in the eyeshadow. It's on the top of my cheekbones. Center of my nose and I definitely do my nose because I if you can see have what I call a ski jump nose it goes whoop <laughs> and in order to make it be a little bit less ski jumpy I try to really accentuate this part of my nose right here to give it a little bit stronger um, feeling about the um, that particular feature along the jawline a little bit Next is the brown. Can't find one. The one that I used to use is all used up. <laughs> and I'm going to start where my ear attaches, like right underneath where my cheekbone is right there. And go down a little bit and swing up. Just a little bit. This is for party parents. So this is party parents. This is snow. This is flowers. This would be dewdrop, snow queen. This would be um, Spanish. This would be the base for Arabian. This would also be um, any other role that doesn't have more specific makeup than that. Okay. So we're doing the shading on the forehead at the temples. And you can see my skull bone structure is really starting to come through now in my reflection in the mirror. Jawline. going from 
from the innermost part of where the eyebrow meets the face and pulling straight down on the nose, creating a little bit of shadow there to make it become a little bit more prominent. Okay, so that's basic contouring. Next, eyelashes. For women, for eyelashes, I tend to do two and double them up. Um, you're going to need to have glue. Oops. Basically just take two pairs. It can be two of the same. These are two of the same. It's fine. And just place one carefully on top of the other one. And you can kind of see the difference between this is the single and that's the double one. And again, you can, you know, trim or cut the lashes if you don't have very wide eyes. Sometimes you can cut them to, to fit your face a little bit better. Um, also, a little trick, as I said before in the other video, um, put, the la put the glue, a thin bead of glue, on the edge of the lash. Very thin. It does not need to be even that thick. Very thin. You just need a little bubble and you can spread it all around. And then let it sit for a minute before you actually put it on. Because that allow the, allows the glue to become a little bit tacky and it will stick to your eye better. Otherwise it just kind of slides around until the glue has a chance to dry a little bit. And, and then it doesn't, sometimes it's not in the right place where you want it. So a very thin bead on the top of the eyelash. Just let that sit for a minute. Um, I also recommend having a, a smaller makeup mirror that has the, you know, the flip around magnified section to it. I normally have one, but Fortunately, I don't today, especially if you're getting older like me. <laughs> Might need a little bit more putting these things on again. Press it in there pretty well and make sure that it's flat against your skin. You don't have to put it right down at the edge. It's not necessary for you to attach it to your eyelashes themselves. In fact, if you do that, you do run the risk of pulling some of your eyelashes out when you take off the lashes, so I suggest not doing that. In fact, I have known some people to rip all of their eyelashes out, and that is no fun. So put it just a little bit above where your regular eyelashes are. Okay, is the eyebrows, and I'm using pretty dark because my hair color is dark. But even for fair, uh, fair skinned and fair haired dancers, they should still use fairly dark eyeshadow. What about eyebrow pencil? Um, I usually do the shadow first, okay, and then finish it off with the pencil. So I do the main part of it with the shadow, and then I'll finish the line off with the pencil.
Expert Eyes Maybelline. I usually use dark brown, but if you um, have really dark hair, then you would use black. Um, just to finish off the line here. And again, the curve in the line, if you notice, normally I would put the curve in the line about there. The first stage is all the way out. And the eyebrow is extended past the natural line of the hair. Okay, next I'm going to do the eyeshadow, and again I'm going to use fairly dark brown, following the contour of my natural brow ridge, not coming too far in on the inside. Pulling it out a little bit on the outside. So that it mirrors what's going on with the um, edge of the eyebrow. A little bit of shading in there. Um, as with the little ones, I usually add a little bit of red. I usually use this as a little bit darker one. This one's from England, actually. Um, doesn't even have a, a color number on it, but it's a sort of a shimmery kind of plum right out. color. Right. You see that? Yeah. Use that on the outside. You can really see that my eyes are starting to Very pretty. get bigger now. Not really, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, eyeliner. It's essentially the same as what I did for the younger ones. Sorry, I have to get in a little bit closer to do this. Let's start on the inside edge. Actually, let's do the top one first. And liquid eyeliner is just something that takes a lot of practice. I want to fill in where the eyelashes might be a little bit uneven. Is this one that you're using a little easier than liquid? The gel based? Um, is it gel or is it? I don't know if it's gel based. It's called a cake. A cake. You want to kind of pull up the inside. You don't want to go too far side. You want to pull it up to kind of Lit, you kind of want to mimic what your eyelash does on here. You don't want it to go too far side. You want it to come up um, a little bit more on the outside edge. See, I'm going pretty, pretty far straight up there. Uh, 
um, I have found in my experience that when you're putting on liquid eyeliner that will, like for this shorter strokes works better it for some reason that you have more control over the eyeliner with the shorter strokes with the 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 brush or the pen ones you need very smooth longer strokes and like I said I'm going pretty fast but I also have done this a heck of a lot so it might take you a little while to get used to it I'm just sort of mimicking what happens with the eyelashes a little bit on the outside edge there almost looks like I made two big eyelashes on the outside there and then of course we have to do the underside and the underside is similar to the little ones start on the inner edge you don't want to be too too thick start on the inner edge about an eighth of an inch or so underneath the natural edge of the eye and not too far out you don't need to go all the way out really just a little bit. So my girls who are doing this for themselves, you need to practice. It takes practice to do that without getting big smudges. And even those of us who have had years and years, it happens. I also like to put a little tiny bit of red just on the inside, just to kind of mimic where the inside of your eye is actually red, where the tear duct is. It just kind of mimics that. Just a tiny little bit. Got it. Okay. The rest is pretty straightforward. It's a little bit of blush. Just to make you look not so dead. <laughs> right on the apples of the cheeks. Going up the hairline and you'll notice I'm putting quite a lot around the hairline makes you stand out a little bit more Oops. a little on the jawline don't worry too much about getting too specific. Like I said, it needs to be blended. And guess what? More powder. More powder. See, it kind of mutes it and blends it a little bit again. The last part is the lipstick. Not bright red for the adults or... That same rose plum brulee, plum. it's called. It's L'Oreal number 213. <clears throat> a little bit of mascara just to touch up the eyes a little bit. Beautiful. Makeup done. Very nice.